hello and welcome back to today's video where we are going to do some experimentation. I'm going to follow up a video that I did about a year ago taking advantage of the QNAP 5GB adapter and we're going to be connecting it to the Synology here. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it but a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, there is building work happening right behind that wall and try as I might, I just can't limit it. So there's going to be the odd bit of background noise that I just can't control. I am sorry about that. Second thing, I cannot take all of the credit for this. I did a test video about a year ago where we just wanted to see if this would work live connected to it. And even though the Synology didn't see the adapter, it did at least detect the adapter in a number of ways. And the LEDs were recognised and it was bus powered and the system did seem to register the connected device, but we couldn't utilise it. Now since then, those of you that have watched my video do know that several people have managed to get this adapter to work with drivers being um, posted on, I believe, GitHub, and we will be going through their resources and giving them the credit they deserve. Also, do go into the comments of that previous video, which I'm sure has been referenced here on screen. Uh, there's lots of people there that did highlight this. The only reason I haven't touched on this till now, third disclaimer, is that I still don't believe this is truly a stable idea. It does allow you to connect the adapter to your Synology NAS and allows you with pretty much the lot you know all of the Synology NAS systems if you choose the right package which we'll go through later in the video it will allow you to attach a 5 gigabit ethernet connection to a USB 3 powered Synology NAS the bulk of which are all you uh, 1 GBE so it's five times what you've already got there but the driver and the signed driver has a tendency to drop and if you reboot the system or if you install a firmware update often the driver gets deactivated. I'm going to show you guys how to manually reactivate it, but there's no avoiding that this does potentially lead to an unstable environment of one where you're going to set up and forget and then not realize maybe backups have not run or whatever. So the reason I've held on till now is simply that I wasn't confident in its stability. And frankly, I'm still not um, completely uh, reliant on its stability now as a long-term storage method uh, interaction with your NAS at least but I will say it does allow you to add a 5G connection and if you do want to try this this video will show you exactly how to do it now for today's video we are using the Synology DS420 plus but it's worth highlighting that pretty much any Synology NAS that has at least an Intel 64-bit or AMD now of course with the Ryzen's um, 64-bit x86 processor. I am seeing drivers uh, on that GitHub that detail some of the other versions out there, but I wonder about the throughput and certainly if there's USB ports. But I'm going to take you through some of the steps later in the video on that screen, and I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. Also in this video, we're going to do some performance benchmarks. <laughs> I've got a Sonic Solo 10G here. You don't need one of those, but it is worth highlighting that if you are going to interact with this NAS, over a 5GBE connection using this adapter, you have to make sure you are using a host system that is also at least 5GBE. You're going to need connections at both ends to be even. That's why I'm using a 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. But what you can do is buy two of these. They're about 50 or 60 nicker a pop, I think. And there, you can attach one of these to a PC and another one to your Synology NAS for that 5GBE connection between or you know introduce a switch in between there's lots of options open but what we're going to do is go through the steps here is the adapter for those that aren't aware it's a usb3 cable so we've got usb3 there and uh, usb a i should say and we've got a type c connector there at the end and that is the adapter it's that little heat sink adapter there's no additional power it's powered by usb um no fan inside it's just you know thermal um paneling inside and you've got that dissipation of heat there from the outside aluminium. We've got the USB um, Type-C USB 3 port there. And on the other end, that 5G Base-T connection. Oh, we can remove that bit of plastic. Um, there we go, there. So, what we're going to do is take the adapter first, connect the USB 3 connection, and then connect it to one of the USB 3 ports. Let's go for the front one. The USB 3 ports on your Synology NAS and as you can see there on screen hopefully you can make that out there a green light has been registered then connect the device sorry about the clangs and bangs connect the device to 
your 10 GBE or 5 GBE connection and then make your way over to a PC desktop. You can do this with Mac of course but a lot of the drivers are Windows centric and it's just a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is make my way over to the screen where I'm going to show you guys the next few steps of this. Okay so I've moved my setup here over and I've had to move the mic around. As you can see here on screen Synology Assistant, I've opened it up there, I've clicked search and right now I'm going to find my Synology NAS on the standard 1GBE network. This is not the 5GBE connection, this is exactly how you would connect to it normally. Double click and see your desktop of the NAS here. Now you don't have to log into it yet but I'm just logging in now just to show you guys my uh, environment here. Uh, just to let you guys know I have not uh, installed the driver or anything yet. If we go into the control panel we can see here on the network ports, we go into network interfaces, we've got the 1GBE right now, and that's about your lot. Nothing else going on there. On top, If we scroll down here, we can have a look at installed packages, and these are the only packages we've got installed on this NAS at the moment. We've only lumped in an SSD into this, nothing more. Um, so now we have to follow the next steps. Now the first thing you have to do is head to this page. Now this is some great work here. And again, full credit here to the names that we've got master. Um, we've got some of the names here, which frankly are quite difficult for me, but I'm going to keep them on screen as much as possible so credit can go to where it's due. And this link will be in the description as well as in the page on NAS Compares in the description below. Now, there's all of these files, but you don't have to worry too much about all of this stuff, to be perfectly honest. Most of this is just basically revision notes and things that have changed over time. Um, and what you need to do is scroll down to this section here. Now, this will have a list of two things. It's got the release page for all the downloads. So from here, this release page, if we close all those other links so we can show it to you live, the release page shows us both variants right now readily available of this um, free release alpha of this 5 GBE to USB adapter and these are all different CPUs you can see here on screen these are all the Synology installation file you're going to need but then you have to figure out which one of these applies to your Synology NAS so going back to that first page we we're looking at there next go to the model ID page from this model ID page here you simply need to find your NAS. So in my case, I'm using the DS420J, uh, sorry, the DS420 Plus. And as we can see, the architecture, it is a Gemini Lake processor. So the Gemini Lake processor is the one we want to utilize here. So then what we do is go back to that listing here and find the Gemini Lake download. Click that download, there's no need to log in and it downloads it there to your desktop PC or Mac system. The next thing you need to do is head back into your Synology NAS, go into the package center that we looked at earlier on, but before you go any further, go into settings. From here, make sure you can install applications that aren't Synology. Go to the trust level and then select any publisher. There are other options here that you may find interesting that allow you to update different packages as well as add ever other download stores, but the Any Publisher tab is just what you need. Then click OK. From here then, go up to Manual Install. Then click Browse and find the file you've just downloaded. For my case, we go into my Downloads folder and find it there. I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to download this file right here. But again, make sure you download the right SPK file for the CPU on your NAS. Double click and then click next. From here, it will invite you to install the Aquantia driver that's been developed by BBQQ. And then from there, it has now installed it. It's a very small file, and as you can see, it's now installed. The driver for the 5GBE to USB 3 adapter has now been installed. However, if we go back into the network listings, so once again, going back into control panel to make sure it's refreshed, go into there, if we look at the network interfaces, the 5GBE connector has still not appeared. The reason is because this driver still needs to take effect. 
And this is what I'm getting at when I talked about long-term stability. All you need to do is click stop on the adapter and then restart the adapter. Once you've restarted that adapter, as you see there, the new USB 3 5GBE connection has been registered. It's now seeing that there is a 5000 megabits per second or 5GBE connection present on the NAS. And that's that cable I connected earlier. To put it into perspective and to let you know it's happening, if I disconnect that cable now, the LAN 3 connection will almost certainly sever any second because that has disconnected our USB 3 to 5 GBE connection. If I reconnect it now, give it a few seconds to register the connection of that uh, LAN cable to the adapter, you can see that it has now been seen. And that's that. If we reboot the system, which we'll do at the end of the video, I'll show you what will happen, because often the network interface will be dropped again, and you'll have to go into the package center and stop and restart that driver. So, why don't we do a few bench tests while we've got it here. Now, if we go into my computer, where we've done my uh, computer stuff from earlier, go into there, we can see these shared drives I've created earlier from a previous test no longer function. Now the two NATs have appeared, we can go ahead and mount that mapped network drive. We can click map drive, Enter the login credentials for the NAS in question. Create a mapped drive of one of those shared folders. We'll call this one drive T. Click finish. And now when we go onto my PC, we can see that that SSD that I've put inside this drive is now visible. This is a single SSD. And then what we can do from here is just run some very early tests. So for now, we've got our T drive found. We're going to go for a one gigabyte test file at 1080p. So as you see, we're hitting those write speeds pretty early on. However, this is still a shared lane of 5GBE over USB 3. This is one of the main reasons that QNAP, uh, when they originally unveiled their 5GBE to USB adapter, showed slight differences in read and write performance, which is present here. Now, it is worth highlighting that if you did have a more fully um, populated NAS RAID device, you may see high speeds in this, but you will very rarely exceed speeds of 400 megs on this adapter. However, this is still a huge leap over the 1 GBE that you would see if you were trying to take advantage of a mapped network drive on your NAS traditionally. Case in point, if we go back into the, uh, the Synology Assistant tool here, this time we map a network drive with the one GBE drive. Click next. We're going to mount the same drive, but this time give it a different letter. And this time it's over the one GBE connection. We should see a marked difference in that performance. So if we go into the, if we exit AJA, reopen AJA with that new mapped network drive new drive X, click start. As you see here, because I'm using the wireless connectivity on my laptop, we're seeing lower speeds connecting to this NAS. Now, if we were connecting directly to it, then we might see higher speeds, but even then, we would never exceed 100 megs. And that's kind of the main difference there between them. Now, if we try black magic, we can repeat the same tests. So again, a 1GBE test, we're going to be testing the T drive, and there it is there. Select folder, click run. Once again, we're going to see similar results, but with Blackmagic's own extra layers of information readily available. This shows that the adapter does work. I just worry about it dropping from time to time and having to restart that driver within DSM, which is what you may expect from an unofficial um, driver. I mean, fair play to BBQQ. This is some solid work. And it's worth highlighting that a lot of these drivers and versions of those drivers are being released that work with several other 5GBE to USB 3 adapters. So as good as the QNAP one is, there are other options out there, some of which for 2.5GBE, some of them for 5GBE. 
Now, if we can make our way back into that Synology NAS, we've finished with that black magic testing. We'll let that conclude there. What we're gonna do now is restart the NAS. What we want to see is what happens if we installed a firmware update. If, for example, we are restarting the NAS for some network changes that we've applied. So what I'm gonna do is allow this Synology NAS to reboot. There's gonna be a couple of beeps in the background while this takes place. And then we're gonna see if this adapter gets picked up again. The LED lights have now deactivated on the front of the NAS. Presumably there will now be drive spin down as the system prepares to reboot. I'm gonna fast forward to the reboot in here, but I'll keep it on screen there to show you guys just how quickly this is going to be, how quick this is going to take even. The user interface has now rebooted on my screen. I believe some of the apps will still be booting up, but if we make our way into the Synology NAS now, I can see lots of activity there with the LEDs on the front. The beeping has happened. It only took a few minutes. And now if we go into the control panel, into those network interfaces, and we have a look, and luckily for us, that 5 GPU connection is still present. However, it isn't impossible that it would have dropped. So you will have to monitor this connection if you choose to use this adapter moving forward. However, it has to be said that given the newer generation of Synologies for the most part do not feature greater than one GPE as standard, this is still an excellent way to allow you to add further an ethernet ports to your NAS that are greater in their performance. Next, let's do a very quick look and see if it's possible to create a bond between these drives. We're just gonna go for load balancing for now. And as you can see, we can bond these connections. Unfortunately, because they're different speeds, there will be difficulties and often that parity will be broken with each port being uh, only 1000 megs. However, if we had more than one of these five GPE to USB adapters present, then chances are we could link aggregate two of these and get that 10 GPE at just 50 to 60 pounds a pop for those adapters. And once again, remember, there are other adapters available out there. They've just not been tested yet, but I hope to test these out very soon here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. Once again, huge props to BBQQ here and this AQC111 adaption of the adapter from Aquantia to Synology NAS systems. It's a big, big ask and it's people like him or her that actually get these things moving forward for us and give us the best storage technology we can, despite certain corporations maybe telling us not to. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you did enjoy. Click subscribe to learn more. Go into the description for all the links and the article to this complete 5GBE um, update uh, and upgrade to your Synology NAS, and I will see you next time.